for joining the Bethel LA virtual worship experience. Bethel LA is a church located in South Los Angeles, community with the community at heart. We minister to the social, physical, and developmental needs to our community through preaching the gospel and providing food and clothing distribution, housing for the homeless, benefits outreach to our veterans, intervention and prevention to gang members re-entering resources to the formal incarcerated and mental health services. We take seriously Jesus' example in Luke 4, chapter 18, to preach the gospel to the poor and deliverance to the captive, to heal the brokenhearted, the recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. More information is available at our website at www.BethelAMELA.com. We can only do this with your financial gifts. You can support our ministry by visiting our website and clicking on our Donate Now button. We are now accepting giving by text with our phone number 323-310-5800 or through our affiliate Giveify.com or by mailing your support to Bethel AME Church, 7900 South Western Avenue, Los Angeles, California, 90047. There's no more need to fight. Watch God provide. God provides. It's hard to say when there's no food to eat. Or what you see fills all that life will be. And will this be another year of misery? for me but my faith can't survive on just things I see and my feelings can't control my destiny see God I only want what you believe for me so tonight Close your eyes, there's no more need to fight. Ooh, love, watch God provide. He will provide. For your eyes. Oh, I know, I know, I know He will. So tonight, so tonight, close your eyes, there's no more need to fight. Oh, watch God provide. God he will provide. God 
before your very eyes. Oh, whatever you need, I know, I know, I know, I know He will, He will provide. Oh, yes, I know He'll step right in in the nick of time. Yes, He will. Oh, yes, He'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, yes. And you won't have any room to receive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tonight, close your eyes. There's no more need to hide. Watch God provide. Let us pray. Father, we come to you again this morning this second Sunday of June, thanking you, O God, for your grace and your mercy, thanking you for your blessing on our lives and our families, thanking you for keeping us, O God, being a good God that still sits high and look low. We thank you today, O God, that you still specialize. We just stop by today to lift our hands up to heaven and let you know, oh God, we still lean and depend on you. We thank you for what you've already done. And oh God, that that you're about to do. You brought us low this many months. And even though it's been many, many dangers, toils, and snares, we've already come. It's been your amazing grace. For that, we thank you for your amazing grace. We thank you for your fresh mercies every day. We thank you for your compassion that you've shown to us. We thank you, oh God, you are a compassionate God today. Now, oh God, will you bless us? Bless our families. We know that you know all about it. Will you touch in the name of Jesus? Remember us on today, oh God. Remember us and touch us from the crown of our head. To the sole of our feet. Oh God, touch our bodies, touch our minds. Yet we still thank you for a reasonable portion of our strength and health. We thank you for the activities of our limbs. We thank you, oh God, that you steal a bridge over troubled water, a way out of no way. You steal a doctor in a sick room and a healer today. And for that, we say thank you this Sunday. This Sunday, we lift you up. This Sunday, we say hallelujah to you, God. This Sunday, we thank you for your son, Jesus. Now be in this service, in every door that is open online, and oh God, and open, and, and open. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning can be found in the book of Isaiah. 25th chapter, verses 1 through 9. Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. For thou hast made of a city a heap, and of a defensed city a ruin, a palace of strangers to be no city. It shall never be built. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee. The city of the terrible nations shall fear thee. For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of thy terrible ones is in a storm against the wall. Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers as the heat in a dry place even the heat with the shadow of a cloud, the branch of the terrible one shall be brought low. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wine on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees well refined. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and of the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death and victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces, 
and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off the earth, for the Lord hath spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Now may the Lord have blessed to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his word thereby. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For he is indeed the head of the church and he is the head of our lives. We live, we move, and we have our being because he got up on the third day morning. It's good to be before you one more time as we continue our sheltering in place. Let's go to God in prayer. How we bless and praise you, O oh God, for hearing and answering prayer. For you said in your word that if your people would call on your name, humble yourself, humble ourselves, and pray, then we would hear from heaven, and you would heal the land. And we have humbled ourselves, and we have prayed, and God, you are healing our land, and we say thank you. Come now, and your people bless. Come and give your word success. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Somebody ought to say amen today right where you are. You ought to say thank you, Jesus. And if he's done anything, you ought to say glory to God. Yes. Isaiah 25, verses 1 through 9. From that passage of scripture, I want to preach from the subject, a faithful God. A faithful God. According to biblical scholars, the prophets of Israel were engaged in two types of ministry, foretelling of past and present events and foretelling of future events. Foretelling and foretelling. The prophets were engaged in telling the people of God what God had done. They were engaged in telling the people of God what God will do. Here, the prophet Isaiah is doing both. In the first part of the chapter, he is foretelling of what God has done. You are my God, he says in verse 1, and I will exalt and praise your name. The prophet's exaltation and praise of God is because of what God has done. God never asks anything of us, sisters and brothers, before he first does something for us. I, Isaiah exalts and praises God because of what God has done. In the second part of verse 1, he says, For you have done wonderful things. And, and that's why he's exalting and praising the name of Lord, the Lord because the Lord is has done wonderful things. Within our church, the African Methodist Episcopal Church, the stewards are responsible for the spiritual welfare of the church. They are entrusted with the responsibility of assessing and evaluating and contributing to the spiritual health of the congregation. The stewards ought to be the first persons in the church to recognize what God has done for the church. The spiritual welfare of the church is directly related to what God has done for the church. Exaltation and praise of God is a result of the activity of God. When God blesses and saves and delivers and heals and set free and open doors and break chains for the people of God, the people of God ought to exalt and praise the name of God. I wish I had a witness today. <laughs> If he's been good to you, and if he's blessed you, if he's watched over you, if he's opened doors, if he's made a way, uh, 
you ought to exalt and praise the name of God. Isaiah says that he will exalt and praise the name of God because God has done wondrous things and he has been faithful and true. God is a faithful God. Even when the people of God are unfaithful to God, God is still faithful to the people of God. I wish I had a witness today. The failure is not in God. The failure is in us. Isaiah proclaims God to be his God because God has shown himself to be God. In verse 2, Isaiah says that God made a city a ruin, a fortified city God reduced to ruins, a place to foreigners God erased, to be a city no more. Because God had shown himself to be God, the strong people will glorify him, and the city of the terrible nations will fear him. The strong people will glorify God and recognize God's strength, and those who don't believe in God will fear God. But not only does Isaiah proclaim that God has shown himself to be God because of his strength to reduce fortified cities to ruins and to be no more, but God has been strength to the poor as well. Hallelujah. If you strength to the poor, you You have been strength to the poor, Isaiah says in verse 4 and following. God has been strength to the needy in times of distress. God has been a refuge in the time of storm. God has been a shade from the heat. God shows himself to be God in our lives when nobody else could have done what it is that God did. God shows himself to be God in the nobody but God moments of our lives. When you can't see your way, and there is no way out of no way, but then a way is made, and nobody but God could have made a way. When, when, when doors have been closed in your face, And out of nowhere, a door opened, and nobody but God, hallelujah, could have opened the door. When when failure seemed imminent, and your enemies and your haters were about to gloat over you, and out of nowhere, hallelujah, success was snatched out of the jaws of defeat. And nobody but God could have done it. When the doctors had given their best prognosis based on their medical training and death seemed certain and and they referred you to hospice, but you kept on living one year after another, after another, two years, three years, four years, five years, six years, and, and finally they have to put you out of hospice because you have lived beyond the maximum allowable time of 18 months. Nobody but God. That's, that's what one of our members did some years ago. Sister Clemmy Kennedy, she, she, she was diagnosed uh, with cancer and referred to hospitals. And, and when I went to visit her and take communion to her, she would always say to me, Pastor, nobody but God. I'm, I'm still here because there's nobody but God could have done for me. Hallelujah. She, she lived seven years beyond the diagnosis. They kicked her out of hospitals, and she kept on living. And when God got ready for her to call her home, she went home. Nobody but God. In the nobody but God moments of our lives. That's what I believe 
Isaiah was forth telling to his 8th century audience. He now shifts his prophecy from forth telling of what God has done to foretelling of what God will do. Yes. In essence, Isaiah tells the people that God will be as faithful in the future hmm, as God has been in the past. That, that, that's something you can count on the day. That's something you can take to the bank. That's something you can put in your pipe and smoke. God will be as faithful in the future as God has been in the past. He says that God will reduce the noise of the aliens as heat in dry places and the shadow of a cloud. The songs of your haters will be diminished. Verse 6, he says that on Mount Zion, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of choice pieces with the best of everything. Hallelujah. The best food and the best wine and the best meats. You, you need to know today that only God only gives us the best. The best of everything. That's, that's what he did in sending Jesus to die on the cross. He gave us the only begotten son, the best that he had, the first, uh, the best. He, he gives us the best. Yes, the best, the best car, the best clothes, the best, the best house, the best spouse the best the best children he gives us the best of everything the best food the best wine and the best meats In verse 7 he says that the lord of hosts will destroy the surface of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations there will be no hiding place Everybody will have to stand before the judgment seat. And all people in all nations will stand before our God. Isaiah goes on to say in verse 8 that God will swallow up death and wipe away tears from all of our faces. And take away the rebuke of his people for the Lord has spoken it. And it will be said on that day, this is our God in that day. It will be said that we have waited for him in that day. It will be said that we'll rejoice and be glad in that day. It will be said that salvation is his. The same God that has been with us in the past will be with us in our future. The same God that has watched over us and kept us and held us and been with us and led us, the same God will be with us in our future. God will be as faithful in the future as God has been in the past. Might I have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He is loose the lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on because God is a faithful God. As the people of God, we should exalt him and praise him for what he has done because he is a faithful God. As the people of God, we should wait with gladness and rejoicing for what he will do. 
For what God will do in the future will blow our minds. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into our hearts what God has prepared for those who love him. Our God is a faithful God. And he will be as faithful in the future as he has been in the past. May he bless you. May he keep you. May his face smile and shine upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I, I don't worry about the future. For its skies may turn to gray. I, I don't know what the future will bring. But I know who holds the future. Because I know who holds my hand. That's. That's how I'm moving to the future. That's how I'm moving through the pandemic. That's how I'm moving beyond the pandemic because I know who has held my hand throughout and in the midst of the pandemic. He will be as faithful in the future as he has been in the past. Isaiah says that salvation is his. And he's willing to give it to you today freely. If only you would receive it. Would you receive it today? Pray with me if you will. God in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I confess, O oh God, I have been born in sin, shaped in iniquity, and have done things that were not pleasing to thy sight. Have mercy upon me. Forgive me of my transgressions. Pardon and deliver me, God. Cleanse me from them. I accept your free gift of your son, Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of my life. Come in to my life, into my heart. Take up residence, O oh God. Lead me, guide me, and direct me all along this tedious journey and narrow way. And O oh God, I will forever give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. If that's you today, wherever you are, confined in your own place, in your own space, in your own sanctuary, worshiping Almighty God, and you've prayed that prayer, and you've accepted the gift of his son, Jesus Christ, into your life, whom he raised from the dead on the third day morning. I want to be the first to congratulate you and welcome you to the body of Christ called church. Now we want you to be involved with a faith community a community of like-minded believers who have professed a like faith 
in Jesus Christ as well. Give us a call today. Won't you do it at Bethel, Los Angeles, 323-750-3240, 323-750-3240. And someone will get with you and pray with you and give you instructions and guidance to get you involved in the life of the church and Bible studies and other groups and ministries that are emanating from this place right here on the corner of 79th and Western in the heart of Los Angeles. That we might work out our soul salvation and grow in grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ with over a century of service right here. Won't you do it today? 323-750-3240. And until next week, trusting, leaning, and depending on a faithful God who is as faithful in the future as he has been in the past. And the church says, Amen. Thank you for being a part of the Bethel a &E Worship Experience. There are several opportunities you can express your support through our giving ministry by clicking on the Donate Now button on the Bethel a &E website, www.bethelamela.com. Reverend Dr. Kelvin T. Calloway and the Bethel family wants to thank you for loving, worshiping, and serving with us, 7900 Western Avenue, Los Angeles, California. Phone number 323-750-3240. Email frontoffice at BethelAMELA.com. Thank you for joining Bethel.